Republicans have tried so hard to manufacture some kind of a scandal for Tim Walz, but so far, none of it has worked, and they're growing increasingly desperate to find something that sticks because his approval ratings keep going up. And now even people who didn't like him are coming out and admitting, you know what, he's actually pretty relatable. For example, liberal Matt Lewis, who was rooting for Shapiro to be VP, admitted in an op-ed for The Hill that he was actually wrong about Tim Walls, and yes, he actually is a great VP pick. But it's not just liberal op-ed writers that he's winning over. He's winning over regular Americans, which is what scares Republicans. So they've been scraping the bottom of the barrel, looking for anything, some kind of dirt, to try to drum up some controversy around his military service, or asking whether or not he's lying about his dog Scout and breeds swapped him in photographs, and all of it went nowhere. But they finally got a little bit of hopium when they found out that Tim Walls actually has an estranged brother who's a Trump supporter. And said brother actually made a Facebook post claiming that he has some tea on Tim and he's willing to spill it. So in a reply to somebody encouraging him to get on a stage and endorse Trump, he says, I've thought hard about doing something like that. I'm torn between that and just keeping my family out of it. The stories I could tell, not the type of character you want making decisions about your future. So admittedly, this seems pretty bad. If his brother is able to share a firsthand account of Tim Walls' bad behavior or something that sheds light on his character that could be damaging, then uh, yeah, I think that that is something that would help Republicans. And the right was clamoring for more information from Jeff Walls. And he went viral on social media. And this became a front page story for outlets like the New York Post, specifically citing that quote, the stories I could tell. And even Donald Trump praised Jeff Walls on Truth Social, saying that he sounds like a really great guy. And he even thanked Jeff for endorsing him and planned to meet him in response to a photo of Tim Walls' family in Nebraska posing for a photo with shirts that say Nebraska Walls for Trump. So, I mean, if his own family is that against him, whatever stories Jeff chooses to tell could probably be damaging. So, he chose to speak. The day arrived, and News Nation happened to be lucky enough to score an exclusive interview with Jeff Walls. And um, he shared the stories that Republicans were waiting for. Turns out that the T wasn't too hot. In fact, the tea was cold. Uh, it was a bit underwhelming <laughs> what he had to say, to put it mildly. <laughs> Let's listen. The stories I said I was referencing, I'll give you one example. We talked about it before, that uh, my little brother, when we were younger, we would go on, on uh, family trips and in a station wagon. And the thing was, nobody wanted to sit with him because he had car sickness and would always throw up on us, that sort of thing. There, there, there's really nothing else hidden behind there. People are, are assuming something else. Oh, the T is that he had car sickness as a child and nobody wanted to sit next to him because they're afraid that he was going to throw up on him. And remember, his brother was like, oh, the fucking stories I could tell, man. This is not somebody you want in the White House. And then he's like, yeah, you know, he used to get, <laughs> he used to get car sickness as a kid. What a fucking scumbag. <laughs> wow. I mean, yeah, look, this is a scandal for sure. Do we really want somebody who had car sickness as a kid that close to power, that close to the presidency? I mean, what does this country come to? Next, you're going to tell me that he put his elbows in the dinner table or fucking, I don't know, farted in an elevator. <laughs> Two hours later. Okay, I've composed myself. Now, the story, believe it or not, is going to get even funnier because uh, Jeff is going to uh, share some more things. Um in particular, he says that he is not planning on publicly endorsing Donald Trump. And on top of that, he wants nothing to do with the election. That's not necessarily the funnier part of the story. Nonetheless, we'll watch what he has to say, and then I'll tell you why this is more funny. Despite saying to his Facebook friends that he had thought long and hard about endorsing Trump on stage, now he tells News Nation he wants no part of the election. And we're not campaigning or anything 
for him or against him or, or, or anything like that. Jeff, who is a registered Republican and donated $20 to Trump's 2016 campaign, stands by his comments that he disagrees with his brother. I will say I, I don't agree with, with his policies. And this is the last the media will hear from him. There, there is going to be no further statements to anybody. In other words, he got a little bit too much publicity and decided to not be the guy to attack his brother publicly. But this begs the question, why did you decide to speak out in the first place? And, you know, he says that it was because his friends and acquaintances assumed that he agreed with his brother's policies because they're siblings. But that is a very dumb excuse. Um because you guys haven't spoken in eight years. So why would you think that they're assuming you agree with Tim Walls? That doesn't make any sense. So his his excuse essentially is, well, I'm MAGA, and like my Facebook friends were maybe thinking that I wasn't MAGA since my brother is a running mate for Democrats. I'm sorry, you are fucking stupid, sir. I don't believe you. I think that you wanted a little bit of clout, but then got cold feet. And now he's not even considering a Trump endorsement, which is funny, but that might leave you thinking, wait a second, isn't that a contradiction? Because he already endorsed Trump, did he not? He posed for a photo with a shirt saying Nebraska Walls for Trump, right? Well, if you look closely at the photo, Jeff Walls doesn't seem to be there. Now, I get that there's three other bald guys who look nearly identical, but there's a reason why he's absent from this photo. As journalist Yashar Ali reports, a sister of Democratic vice presidential nominee Tim Wall says she doesn't recognize the people wearing Nebraska Walls for Trump t-shirts in a photo that is making the rounds on social media. It turns out they are distant cousins. So, what does this mean? Well, it means that Trump thanked Tim Walz's irrelevant ass brother for an endorsement he never actually received, which makes the story so much more hilarious. Damn, that's amazing. So guess what? It's back to the drawing board, my friends. Time for Republicans to figure out some new scandal, right? Some new way to attack Tim Walls. But before this scandal with his brother culminated in a big nothing burger, I do want to share another line of attack against Tim Walls because he actually responded directly to this one. And you could see why, because how could you not respond to an attack so dumb? I saw last week the Wall Street Journal was trying to say because they did a story that apparently I am the poorest person to ever run for vice president. <laughs> So then, but then they did another story that said, oh, he's actually richer than his statement says because he has, and I quote, like this is an evil thing, a defined benefit pension plan. That is my wish for every American to have a defined benefit pension plan. That's how desperate they are. If you are attacking a candidate's pension plan and you're trying to, I guess, insinuate that there's some rich elitist because of it, you've really got nothing. You've got jack fucking shit. This is even more desperate than the attacks on Bernie Sanders when he was running for president, when they tried to say that, you know, he owned a house and was a socialist, got him. But Bernie Sanders actually weighed in, believe it or not, and talked about this attack on Walls writing on Twitter. Yes, Governor Walls has a defined benefit pension plan. That's good, he earned it. At a time when about half of older workers have no retirement savings, we've got to restore defined benefit pensions so that all Americans can retire with the respect and the dignity they deserve. And he's right. And I love to see harmony between my ex-favorite POTUS candidate and my current favorite POTUS candidate. There's no reason why they can't get along. But I mean, Bernie is obviously, you know, what he's saying here is important. He always brings it back to policy. And I think that this is a good opportunity to highlight how pensions have been destroyed in this country because all of a sudden 401ks, which are inferior, have been replacing pension plans. And now it's to the point where a lot of people can't retire even though they're of retirement age. So it, it opens the door to him explaining why pensions are preferable, which makes it a terrible attack. Now, I get that it's the Wall Street Journal, but still, this is pretty desperate even for them. But let's get down to brass tacks. Why do Republicans and some right-wing media outlets hate Tim Wall so much? 
I think that's obvious. He is an effective communicator. I would argue one of the most effective communicators in politics in a very long time. So with that being said, since we're already glazing up Tim Walls in this video, let me leave you with uh, one more clip from that same speech from his Labor Day rally, because I think that what he says here demonstrates why they're so afraid of him, because he is so damn good. Here's what he says about Donald Trump. This guy has made it clear how he stands. He's sitting down at Mar-a-Lago after he got elected president, and this was his exact quote. He's talking to a bunch of folks at Mar-a-Lago. You're rich as hell, and we're gonna give you a tax cut. At the same time, he was telling workers they get paid too much already. That's who this guy is. You tell me who in Wisconsin is sitting around saying, damn, I wish they'd give billionaires tax cuts and screw me over. Damn, I wish they'd take my health care away. I wish they'd underfund my public school. I wish they would make my job more difficult, more dangerous. And then at the end of the day, I wish they'd make me work till I'm 75 years old. No one's saying that. No one's asking for that agenda. What they're asking for is to be treated fairly with dignity. That's what we have.